Good day and welcome. Uh, today we'll be going over the Storehub B2B e-commerce solution to evaluate some of the features and uh, the setup criteria that we use and um, how it can fit nicely in with your existing B2B and business operational requirements. On the Storehub website, we have a list of the up-to-date ERP systems, aka accounting systems that we integrate with, and then also the retail sales channels, and then our Storehub proprietary B2B commerce platform as well. So how that works is essentially, um, if you have a website, for example, say the Storehub website was a, um, a, a a company website and we want to have a login or register or something like that on the website we would have a uh, a button here for click here for trade customers to log in and as soon as they would do that it would take them off to the store hub b2b store now we get a question asked a lot of us and that is you know why don't we use woocommerce b2b or one of the other b2b commerce platforms out there well the simple reason is that those platforms often have issues with the types of connectivity that one can um, you know, use, almost like the APIs don't cater for the right fields, um, and also they're quite difficult to set up, and uh, they are also uh, quite flaky or um, inconsistent with the services that they provide. And uh, if there is a problem, then we're unable to assist and uh, you know, help debug that. So the Storehub B2B commerce platform is very reliable and it works out the box and doesn't require you to set up a new host environment and it can link up very nicely with your existing website by simply adding a button on the front end. All right, so in terms of the B2B commerce, what is the difference between B2B commerce and your retail commerce stores like WooCommerce or Shopify or Equid or something similar? Well, for that, I'm going to use my little sketch diagram over here. So essentially, retail commerce is the practice of linking one price list using Storehub, and then we link that to WooCommerce. Let's just, I'm, I'm just gonna call it WooCommerce for now. It, could, it will represent uh, any retail sales channel. So we have essentially one price list that gets sent to WooCommerce, and then orders simply come back to your ERP system, or our system writes them back. And then that goes to one warehouse. Okay. So for a B2B business, that's often not adequate because you might have more than one price list and you might have a discount for each different type of customer and then you might have a customer linked to a price list and then you might have a sales rep linked to a customer. And all of these functions need to be um, run through the B2B store, otherwise the whole ordering process and automation breaks down. So what I'm going to do quickly is show you how the B2B concepts work with Storehub. So let's start off with your accounting system. So this is your ERP system over here. So most ERP systems that we integrate with work in pretty much the identical way in terms of the features and uh, data that is available. So we have your ERP system, you might have a single warehouse or you might have multiple warehouses. I will show you how our store handles that in a bit. So what we do is we sync up your accounting software with the Storehub platform. So that's where we manage all the stock and the, sorry, all the products, the customers and your sales reps for the B2B store. So we can link up to your WooCommerce store, but then we can also add on our B2B sales channel. So this is why we call our product store hub because it's the hub of all of your e-commerce data. So essentially what happens is if you were selling on WooCommerce, that order would then go get written back to the uh, ERP system, and then also B2B would get written back to your ERP system. The key difference is that the B2B orders get written back to a customer's account rather than just a generic cash sales customer like with your WooCommerce retail sales. So in your accounting software, so you may not be using all of these features, but just bear with me. It's nice to illustrate how all the uh, data hangs together. So let's say, for example, we've got four different price lists. We can have a customer linked to a price list. Uh, I'm not Leonardo da Vinci here, so my artistic drawings are fairly limited. But we have then a sales rep, which can also be linked to a customer. Okay, So as soon as we install the Storehub Sync module, all of this data gets pulled up to the Storehub cloud and then automatically pushed to the B2B store. Now, that's actually quite a complex set of data. You've got 
multiple warehouses. So each customer can be linked to a price list on a warehouse, i.e. prices one on warehouse A, prices one on warehouse B. Um, and then a sales rep can be linked to one of those, <coughs> excuse me, one of those customers on one of those warehouses. So I'm just explaining how the data hangs together. This is all done automatically as soon as the Storehub uh, sync module is installed, all right? So how the B2B store works is your account customer, let's call him Joe Soap. Joe Soap visits the B2B store and he wants to place an order. Let's say it's after hours, he's had a busy day and he wants to place an order. So he'll go to the B2B store, log in. As soon as he logs in, we look up the customer code and we can see what price list is he associated with and which warehouses are is he associated with. Um, the sales rep can likewise do the exactly the same function. They can log into the B2B store and then find a list of customers that their sales rep profile is associated with in your ERP system. And that allows the sales reps to essentially get on-demand live pricing and stock for the customers to, you know, if you're on the road, you wanna, you know, on your tablet, pull up the, the latest stock levels and advise your, advise your customer as to what items they should be ordering. So that's the sort of uh, summary of, of the B2B store workflow. Um, what I'll do is I'll jump onto the actual Storehub website platform and show you how this data looks in a bit. So <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is link up the accounting software. So the accounting software forms the basis of all of the product stock information and customer and sales rep information as well. So here you can see how regularly it's syncing. Um, we can set it up over here. I'm not going to go into that now as this is more of a functionality work through video. Okay, so in order to add a sales channel, we can add a B2B channel and then also a WooCommerce channel. So the B2B channel is fairly simple. Um, all we need to do is add a, a name for the store and then pick your shipping delivery service item. So that's the cost of shipping will be allocated to that item. Give your site a unique code, for example, um, your site.b2b.storehub.io, that will be the, the domain name, um, and then that's it. So as soon as you click Submit, the Customers tab over here and also the Sales Agent tab will become visible <clears throat> as that's a uniquely B2B related feature. So you'll see here, we have a list of all the customers that have been pulled through. I have obviously uh, blanked out some of the key information as it's uh, uh, customer information but you'll see here we've got the customer name the customer code the sales agent who's linked to that customer code um, contact information phone email you can see the different price lists the customers have been linked to the tax rate if they've been allocated a specific discount on the on their master file in your ERP system and then you can also see the uh, customer category or group that they've been allocated to in the ERP system. Now, that group can be used to, um, to define what we call restricted products. So for example, certain customer groups can see certain product groups. Now, this would be useful if they are, if you're selling brand sensitive products, um, restricted products like um, firearms or explosives or chemicals or perhaps certain types of pharmaceuticals. So it has a lot of, uh, lot of function over there. <clears throat> you can see if the customer is active in the accounting software or not. As soon as you deactivate the customer in the ERP system, they will no longer be able to log in and access their account on your store. We also pull through the delivery addresses listed on the customer's master file. So you can have one or more delivery address at the point of checkout. This customer does, does sorry, these customers don't have any delivery addresses pulling through, but um, you can take my word for it. <laughs> um, and then you can administer each customer in a certain way. You can either impersonate them. Impersonating would mean you would view the store as if you were the customer to see their prices and their list of products, and also the order history as well. Um, you can also assist the customer to edit the user um, or set the password if they've forgotten, um, or you can create a new user on that account. So our system does cater for multiple users per business, so you can have three different users logging into the one company to place orders. Um, let's say for example you have a brand new online store and you want to invite all of your customers. You can hold down 
shift click just like you would in Excel and then say invite all 15 customers. So it makes it very easy to get running on our B2B store. Typically our B2B stores take about 15 minutes to set up and configure and then another 15 minutes to half an hour to actually hand over and just give the customer some training. Um, either a store hub representative will provide this or your store hub business partner consulting business will be able to assist you with that. All right, so the next key function of the B2B store is the sales agent functionality. Now, a lot of businesses do use sales agents because <clears throat> it's the route to market and the way your business generates sales. So you can see here, you've got the customer code, you've got the description, username, email, telephone, and then um, you can either um, invite the user to set a username and password, um, or you can block the sales rep. You can see here certain sales reps have been uh, deactivated in the, in the accounting system. So this is all automatically done without any manual spreadsheet data imports, et cetera. And this is why we choose to use our B2B solution rather than a third party. It just means, just means the setup is infinitely quick. All right, so the customers, they are linked to a sales rep. So let's say for example, I impersonated a customer now and um, and that would take us to the online store. So as soon as we log in, the online store is, um, is going to show us a list of uh, product categories, uh, the thumbnails over here, and then you'll have the um, product categories down the left over there. Do apologize, the net does go slow while my screen is recording. So let's just wait for it to load quickly. Um, we can see over here that this is the person that's impersonating the store and then this is the customer that I'm currently impersonating. So it just gives you uh, some context as to who you are currently working with um, when you're impersonating. All right, so this B2B store, it's not the most um, visually impressive store, but B2B is designed to be a ordering mechanism. It's an ordering platform or portal, okay? So your customers are already brought into your beautiful brand or your, you know, brand messages and the styling and the you know, beautiful graphics that you might have on your, on your brochure website. The B2B stores meant to take large numbers of orders and to allow your customers to order them very quickly. So if I click into a category, we'll see immediately that there are it's, it's um, what we call a quick order category. So you'll have the ability to see a small thumbnail image, the um, name, SKU code, price including, and sorry, excluding, and also the number of stock items available. So this company's chosen to show the exact number of items in stock. You can choose to show if it's just in stock or out of stock or make it always in stock, i.e. no matter what the stock status is in my accounting software, you can place an order. And then it's very easy to quickly hammer the add to cart button. Or if you want to, you can quickly change the, um, the quantity to add to cart. Let's just say that's two, we add it to cart. And as soon as you add an item to cart, the uh, summary is over here and then you can then proceed to check out further. So as soon as you click on check out, our software does at every point check for the stock availability. Has the stock availability changed when you add it to cart versus when you actually go to check out versus actually submitting the order. So here you can see um, we've got the sales agent code has been linked to this seller's profile already. So our store B2B store settings, which I'll cover in a bit, um, does allow for your sales agents to have some sort of flexibility in the way we set it up. So what, I, what do I mean by that? Well, it's do the sales reps need to accrue commission if they were not involved in the placing of the order? So if their customer went and placed an order out of their own, uh, uh, own doing, then the sales rep won't get any commission. We can also define which sales reps, sorry, um, should a sales rep see all customers, all customers linked to their profile only, or linked to their profile and unlinked customers, i.e. the free for all customers. So shipping method, um, this, this customer selected on account. You can essentially create your own shipping method um, using our shipping method calculation engine, which I'll cover in a bit, and then a payment method. So this is currently set to on account and will raise probably a sales order. Um, we can define the different payment methods to raise different document types. So you can raise a quote, so you can have multiple 
um, payment methods, one for get a quote, one for um, on account, which might raise a sales order or an invoice. So it really de depends on how your customers uh, want to place the orders and how you want to handle the sales documents in terms of reserving stock. We've also got the ability to have a purchase order number field. So this can be flagged as an optional field or a required field, or we can just hide it all together. Um, this purchase order number will then get raised with the document in your accounting system, your ERP system, and then also the document note will also be captured as well in the footer somewhere, depending on which ERP system you're using. Um, if you submit the order, um, this customer hasn't opted to show the delivery address, but if you do have delivery addresses, there'll be a list of delivery addresses over here on that are pulled from your master file, or you can allow your customers to enter in your own enter in their own delivery address. So you can do forced delivery address on file, or you can enter in your own delivery address as a store setting. So as soon as you click submit order, this order will then get raised in your accounting system at, at the appropriate document type you've specified, so quote, sales order, or a invoice. Um, and essentially all information will be captured that you would need to fulfill the order thereafter and generate a picking slip. As soon as the submit order button is clicked and the order gets obviously submitted, um, we'll send out a order confirmation email to the customer. So that will just be a summary of what's on this page. It's not an official tax document. You will still need to generate the tax document in your accounting software. The reason why we don't want to send it out automatically is because your customer may request some changes or you might find that your stock is actually inaccurate and you cannot fulfill the order, therefore it still needs to, to be edited. Um, so that's how the ordering process works. So let's cover some of the store settings briefly. So you can personalize the site with your own logo and then if you want to change the style, you can add your own CSS and JavaScript to personalize it further. You can show available stock quantity show hide, or you can say show for sales agents, but hide the stock for all of my customers. That's a very useful one, because typically your sales agents would want to know exactly what is in stock because otherwise they can't advise the customer appropriately. Show stock availability, show hide, so show for sales agents, hide for customers. Um, you can allow for back orders. So if you say allow back orders, then you can enter in some terms over here. Um, for example, this item will be made to order, turnaround time takes two weeks as an example. Um, <clears throat> you can hide out of stock SKU code. So if stock is zero, then don't show it on my online store. And then if you allow for negative stock, then show it as zero. So these are all options you can check on as well. So this is all display stuff. Check out, so there's, there's my purchase order number field we discussed previously, make it show required, optional, or hide it. Um, you can then allow your customers to input their own delivery address, true or false. Um, you can specify a delivery date and then a minimum lead time. So for example, if it's set to seven, um, you won't be able to place a delivery date seven or fewer days um, from the date of order. That's just an optional setting as well. And then you can have a, a note here that, that will tie in with the delivery date function. So these are the sales agent settings. So customer visibility for sales agents, own, own and unlinked, or all customers are visible by all sales agents. And then you can set the sales agent code on orders. This over here is the order confirmation email that gets sent out. So here you may want to put in some of your terms and conditions. It might be linked to your banking details or a link to your returns policy. Um, it's completely up to you how you want to personalize it. But essentially this is the information that will be uh, sent out every time an order is placed and you can BCC in your delivery or accounts department or your log logistics department um, and then also the sales rep as well. So that's essentially the, the B2B store settings. Um, we do have the different payment methods you can set up. So you can add a payment method and then uh, pick from one of these options. Um, most of B2B stores work on account. For shipping methods, you can add your own shipping methods, so give it a name, description. You can choose different calculation methods. So it could be free shipping, it could be weight-based, percentage-based, the cart value, etc. And you can have a base rate. So all orders must be, for example, 200 bucks. Um, and then free shipping is if you spend, let's say, 2,000 bucks or more. All right, and then priceless. So our 
system does cater for multiple price list currencies. So for example, if this price list code 8 was a US dollar price list code, you can then define the uh, dollar over here. So that's a US dollar, and then that would be, um, this one might be in your euros. So you can define different prices for different customers to see the currency symbol on the store front. Note, we don't do currency calculations because we pull the actual priceless price from your ERP system. Um, so it's always 100% accurate and you'll, and you'll never get partially paid invoices due to rounding errors in currency calculation. Um, and then all orders that get placed online, we have on the orders dashboard. So if you have a retail sales channel, something linked to let's say Amazon and Shopify, and then also your B2B channel, um, they'll all appear in the order dashboard. And then you'll be able to expand this and see all the items that were ordered. As you can see, this customer um, has placed a lot of line items, and this is Partly where our product really shines is because you're saving one of your staff, one of your accounts department from manually capturing all of this information. Um, and just think of all the mistakes that are, that are being, being, uh, being emitted by um, using the StoreHub automation software. Um, so let's say for example, your accounting software got crypto locked, hacked or something broke down or you lost internet connectivity. Um, we still save all the orders on our order dashboard, which means that if you ever need to keep processing orders during some downtime with your accounting software, you can come, so, uh, sorry, come here and do so um, using this uh, information provided. You can see on accounts, you can say cash and delivery, which warehouse, agent code, items, price, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So everything's nicely um, saved for you in the event of any traumatic business experiences. Then we save all the information to the logs. So logs essentially um, keep track of all the information that gets synced to and from your accounting software so you can spot any errors when they arise. So <clears throat> one thing that we haven't covered yet is multi-warehouse functionality. So in order for multi-warehousing to work, it's essential that your business's warehouses are all linked under the same company profile and same database. Um, if they're on separate databases, then you'll have to set up different B2B stores. So let's say for example, we have warehouse A, warehouse B, and then warehouse C over here. Um, we set up our B2B store, and we want the customer to be able to shop on warehouse A, B, or C. So this customer would be linked to a price list, which is linked to a warehouse. Let's say for example, this customer is linked to price list A, sorry, price is one on warehouse A and B. Then when this customer logged into the online store, he would get a drop down and select which warehouse he wants to purchase his product from. So if I go back to my store here, let me just pick a different customer quickly. <coughs> All right, so we've logged into the customer's account. We can see a product. This is a drip rock board, um, SKU code. The price is 167.46 bucks. Um, and you can, we can see the warehouse context here is this warehouse. So this will, be, this will automatically um, be generated from a list of warehouses you've chosen to sync when you set up your data source, your link to the accounting software. So if we pick a different warehouse context, let's say for example, George, we'll see that um, this customer in relation to the price has now changed. That was 167, it's now 191. So if this customer had opted to show stock as well, you'd see the stock would change depending on whichever warehouse the, they were looking at. What this means is that your B2B account customer is able to send back orders to different warehouses. So I might order stock from warehouse A and the order will go back to warehouse A, but I, I can also order stock from warehouse B. Now those will be separate orders and will as a result accrue two times delivery costs because they are in, in essence two different physical deliveries. And also the delivery will be different because warehouse A might be a lot closer than warehouse B. So um, it wouldn't make sense to aggregate any shipping costs. So that's why splitting the orders up to the, the, the different warehouses means that it's very easy to manage the online store process. So that's pretty much all I want to show you today in relation to the B2B software. Um, we do have new features being released all the time, so it's best to check with our, one of our sales teams if you are looking at, uh, at our B2B software and uh, something that we have covered 
is not in this video, then please do feel free to reach out to us on sales at storehub.io um, or you can give us a call plus 27879432606. Um, or we have a web ch chat function available over here and we've always got operators standing by to assist you. So please do get in contact with us. Um, like I said before, we are always integrating with new ERP systems and new sales channels. So do please check in on our website for the most up-to-date information on the sync tools that we offer. All right, thank you for your time and appreciate your, your attention and uh, hopefully see you on the store platform soon. Just an art, bye.